the door opens, and in front of me is a horrifying scene. My lover is lying topless on the bed with a girl dressed like a maid. Her hand was on his chest. I'm shocked. The world around me feels like it's collapsing. The maid, upon seeing me, quickly puts on clothes. I rushed inside, grab the water glass on the table, and forcefully splash it on Otis's face, then grab his arm tightly. Otis, what on earth is happening? What are you doing? Mia, what's going on? I shout in frustration. How can you even ask me that? You and her tangled up on the bed. Otis, you're a disgrace. Otis looks towards the maid and then down at himself. Listen to me. It's not what you think. There must be a misunderstanding here. He grabs my hand and tries to explain, but my ears are ringing and my eyes are burning. It's over. We're through. I yank my hand away from him and rush out the door, ignoring his attempts to chase after me to clear his name. Hey there, Mia here, a 21 years old girl. My dad's the big shot CEO of some international finance empire, and my mom rocks the world with her famous jewelry brand, living the dream, right? So, the guy from earlier, yeah. He's my boyfriend. But did you catch what just went down? Did he seriously just pull a fast one on me? For the full scoop, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Life's been a breeze for me from the get-go. All smiles and no worries. Until I hit 19 and my folks decided I needed to grace the halls of some fancy schmancy university for the elite. Since it's too far from home, they got me this small pad close to campus. <laughs> Oh, and they throw in a maid to handle the housekeeping and cooking jazz. But wait, there's more. They're still not chill about it. So they bring in a personal bodyguard. Enter Otis. He might be young, but he's got a background in hired military gigs and had to pass some hardcore tests to land this gig. My folks are over the moon about him. I'm not paying much attention because having a bodyguard in our world is apparently as normal as brushing your teeth. Coming back from school, the maid had dinner all set, and I had my personal bodyguard tagging along every time I stepped out. It felt like things were stuck in a bit of a loop, and honestly, I was getting pretty fed up with this dull routine. Cut to the day, the maid pulls a disappearing act, and I'm left to fend for myself. I decided to take a stab at cooking, but turns out I'm not exactly a culinary genius. I end up slicing my hand while trying to whip up my first meal. Ouch! Cue Otis, swooping in like the superhero he's supposed to be. After fixing me up, he suggests playing chef until the new maid rolls in. Miss, let me handle the kitchen duties until the new help arrives. You? Can you even cook? My old man's a chef, so I reckon I can hold my own. I nodded in agreement, but still eyed Otis with a suspicious look. If the food sucked, I'd be calling for takeout. However, when the dishes were laid out, I was so amazed that my jaw dropped. I took a bite and it was genuinely surprising. Couldn't fathom how someone as stoic and rarely cracking a smile could cook so well. It was the first time I paid attention to my bodyguard like this. Usually they'd trail behind or walk ahead, not engaging in conversations with me. Wow, this is really delicious. Thank you, miss. Can you cook many dishes? I can whip up a few more dishes. From now on, the kitchen is yours. That night, I asked Otis to continue preparing meals for me. Maybe I wouldn't need to find another maid because I was completely convinced. Otis was indeed a skilled chef. <laughs> Not only the main course, but even the desserts he made were fantastic. I feared I'd gain way too much weight. In the following days, I discovered that the beautiful flower clusters around my villa were all planted by Otis himself, not bought from a flower shop as I had assumed. I suddenly realized behind his cold exterior, Otis had a rather romantic soul. One morning, while lazing in bed, I was awakened by the sound of a guitar. I quickly got up and followed the music to the back garden. There was Otis, cradling a guitar, playing some melody. He was so engrossed that he didn't notice I had been there for quite a while. When the music ended, Otis finally noticed me and awkwardly put the guitar down. Is there something you need, miss? You play the guitar? 
a little. I suggested he play another tune. Its cheerful melody made me unconsciously hum along to the beats, much to Otis's surprise. We got closer and understood each other more with every passing day. His face remained stern when protecting me outside, but when we returned to the small villa, he smiled more. <laughs> Sometimes he'd play the guitar and I dance and groove to the music. As I twirled, making my dress sway gently, his gaze was filled with admiration and fascination. During that time, I also consistently turned down the maids that the butler wanted to bring in. I didn't understand why I wanted to keep this private space just for him and me. Otis, I've got a question, and you better answer me honestly. What would you like to ask, miss? Have you ever been in love? Never. How can someone always be with a girl have a girlfriend? Well then, I'll give you some time off to find a girlfriend. No, no. <laughs> But seriously. How do you see me? Miss, you're beautiful, talented, and you sing so well. So, do you like… As if he could read my thoughts, Otis swiftly got up and headed straight indoors, leaving me all by myself in the garden. Otis always managed to find some household chores to keep him occupied, steering clear of any lengthy chats with me. I didn't give Otis a hard time about it because I grasped that there was quite a gap between us. Come Valentine's Day, I discovered that Otis got a gift and chocolates from one of my <laughs> classmates. I practically blew a fuse, turned down all the lively parties my friends invited me to, and just hid out in my room. I couldn't quite figure out why I was behaving this way. Was it jealousy? Miss, aren't you coming down for dinner? I threw a pillow towards the door and angrily shouted, You don't need to care about me. Just go and enjoy your chocolates. It was the first time Otis ignored the rules of a bodyguard. He unlocked my room with a spare key and walked in. Hey, miss, everything all right? The moment I saw him, my nose started acting up, and I just turned away. I didn't want him catching me like this. Just leave, or I'll tell my folks to give you the boot. Otis strolled over. If you want me to hand back the stuff to Bella, I'll do it. Seriously? You'd reject her? Yeah, miss. I'm your guy. Whatever you need. I hesitated, pulled out a gift box, and gave it to him. I like you, Otis. Wanna be my date? Otis <gasps> seemed a bit thrown off by my words, almost like he saw it coming and was ready for it. That's not in the cards, miss. Can't be falling for my employer as a bodyguard. My bad for barging in, miss. If that's all, can I head out? Hold up. Not letting Otis off the hook, I dashed over, pulled him in, and landed a kiss on his lips. Seemed like Otis wasn't putting up a fight anymore as he hugged me tight. We shared a sweet, passionate kiss, and my heart was racing like crazy. You stole my first kiss. Now you gotta stick around and love me forever. Sure thing. Uh, yeah. I promise to love you, and only you, for the rest of my life. I found out later that he already returned the gift and shut down Bella before all this went down. And we officially became a couple, but we could only be intimate in secret, because <laughs> we both knew my parents wouldn't approve. I'm a rich kid with a fortune so vast that an outfit of mine could cost more than half a year's salary for him. And he comes from an ordinary family, never went to college. That's a massive gap between us. But it didn't cool our love. We clung to each other, eliminating any class <laughs> distinctions. I embraced his gifts, no matter how small, cherishing a hairpin, a tiny flower, or even an apple. My parents worried I wouldn't be well taken care of, so they sent two maids to meet my demanding needs. I couldn't find a good reason to turn them down. Those two quickly caught on to the shady business between me and Otis. I came home prepared for Christmas, looking forward to the joyous moments with my family. I miss my parents and little sister dearly. They miss me too, welcoming me with radiant smiles and tight hugs. Otis also came back with me, trying not to get caught by my parents. But surprisingly, he cheated on me right in my own house. I'm a princess in my family, a young lady who's never experienced scorn in society. This betrayal was too much for someone as proud as me. I ignored him, waiting outside for many nights. A few days later, my parents called Otis in. They fired him, claiming he had inappropriate behavior with the other maid. 
Early the next morning, Otis stood outside my room, speaking softly through the door. Mia, live well and be happy. Get lost, you scoundrel! For three days straight, Otis didn't show up. I checked with the maids and found out Otis had taken off. It felt like I was plunging into a black hole, more terrified than ever. Ignoring my family's disapproval, I drove around frantically and went back to the small villa near the school, hoping to find him. I checked all the places I thought he might be, even knocked on Bella's door to ask, but he was nowhere to be found. In the days that followed, I tried to get information about Otis, but it was all in vain. He vanished as if he had never existed. Dark circles formed around my eyes and I lost a significant amount of weight. My parents were worried, encouraging me to attend high society parties and meet other young men. However, I firmly declined. Back in my room, I looked at pictures of Otis and me together and burst into tears. My younger sister Maya walked in. You really loved Otis, huh? Yes, I loved him deeply. Even if he betrayed you? I guess it could have been a misunderstanding. Maya, I should have met him or at least heard his side of the story. I started crying again, and Maya slowly took my hand and revealed the truth about that evening. It was just a misunderstanding. Otis accidentally had a drug drink. Nothing happened between Otis and that maid. I overheard her parents planning the scheme. I was stunned. It turned out they knew everything in advance and asked Otis to stay away from me immediately without letting me know. They planned to call him for a talk, drugged him, placed a maid in his room, and staged the scene I witnessed at the beginning of the story. Following their plan, I went crazy and broke up with him. He, wanting to stay close to me, tried to explain and agreed to do anything to stay. Otis understood the real reason my parents wanted him to leave. So, even though he still loved me deeply, he agreed to leave. After that, he came to find me several times, trying to call me to say goodbye. But when I saw his name on the phone screen, I smashed my phone. Then it cut off all means of communication between him and me. I pushed him away myself. Unable to accept the truth, I stood up and ran to my parents' room. They were extremely shocked to see me. Mia, what's wrong? What happened to you? Why did you do that? Why did you force Otis to leave? Calm down. We just want what's best for you. You should date and get engaged to a wealthy and talented young man. No! I love Otis, and I won't marry anyone else but him. I will find him and be with him at any cost. Following that incident, I desperately tried to find him, but reaching out to him proved futile. Upon returning to his family, I discovered that his parents had divorced long ago, and they had no information about him either. It became apparent that he had a lonely upbringing and my love appeared to be the best thing that had ever happened to him. However, I ended up hurting him, causing him to feel lonely once again. I fell apart completely. Each day felt like a never-ending nightmare, with tears streaming down my face every night. My parents were deeply worried about my worsening condition. I'm sorry, my dear. I wish time could reverse, and we wouldn't have done that. I didn't respond to her, but stared blankly into the distance. Maya also ran to comfort me. I have a way to help you. She helped me fake an illness and be hospitalized, intentionally spreading this news to major newspapers. We hoped he would come when he found out I was sick. However, three or four months passed and he still didn't come to visit me. I thought to myself, could it be that he doesn't love me anymore? Or has he forgotten about me? But even so, I still want to meet him at least once and sincerely apologize to him. Hey, why not fake your death? I believe he'll come when he hears the news. Could that work? What about mom and dad? Don't worry, I've got this covered. Taking a bold chance, I decided to fake my death to reunite with my ex-boyfriend. My parents, recognizing my determination, agreed to join in this theatrical endeavor. Our family orchestrated a mock funeral with me lying in a coffin as if I had truly passed away. The venue was adorned with delicate white roses. Upon hearing the news of my supposed demise, Otis hastily returned. He embraced the coffin, weeping. Mia, please don't go. I love you more than words can say. I walked away because I believed it would bring you a better life so you could keep that princess glow forever. Every single day, I prayed for you, sending my thoughts to where you were. Hoping you were safe. Mia, you were always on my mind. 
in every waking moment. Please, wake up. Let me know you're still here with me. I rose from the coffin, wiping away his tears. Otis, I'm still here. I found out the truth, and I'm ready to be with you until my true end. Otis, astonished but relieved, hugged me tightly and kissed my forehead and hair. Thank you, Lord. My prayers have been answered. Mia, you're still alive. I held him in my arms, tightly embracing my one and only love and said, I'm sorry for not trusting you. Now I know it was just a misunderstanding. You're not angry with me anymore, right? No. As long as you're here with me, nothing else matters. From now on, we'll be together forever. No matter what happens, I won't leave you again. I feel the same way. I love you, Otis. He gently lifted me from the confined space of the coffin, and we exchanged a passionate kiss amid the thunderous applause from those present. <laughs> the household staff swiftly swapped the white roses for vibrant red ones, transforming the scene. The coffin gave way to a small celebration table, and Maya kicked in with lively music, filling the air with energy as she showered us with flower petals. My parents' resistance melted away, <laughs> clearing the path for for our love. Before long, a dazzling ring adorned my finger, symbolizing the official engagement between Otis, my devoted bodyguard, and me. I finished a bottle of wine in my hand. The yeast was spicy and the acrid in the throat. I opened my phone to see a picture of me and Flynn hugging each other. I heartbrokenly clicked on his contact number and started texting. Can we go back? The phone was silent and unresponsive. I picked up the bottle of wine next to me and took another sip. After a while, my phone vibrated to notify me of an incoming message. I nervously opened it. I'm Flynn's girlfriend. He's not here right now. Can you wait until he comes back? He will answer your question. I felt like waking up. Flynn's girlfriend? Hi, I'm Flora. I just broke up with my boyfriend two days ago and was shocked to find out that he has a new girlfriend. I can't believe that in two days, he was able to find someone else. So I went to Flynn's Instagram and stalked him. Oh my God, Flynn had hidden all posts from me before. And after breaking up with me, he already posted his girlfriend online. Let's see, they had been together four months. Does that mean while Flynn and I had broken up yet? They had already fallen in love? Grrr! So I had been fooled all this time without knowing it? Well, last night, I was so overwhelmed with grief and wished to get back with him. It's so frustrating! His new girlfriend was Emma, a petite girl with beautiful <laughs> braided blonde hair. She looks small and fragile and very weak. It's really different from heaven and earth to me. She was a real green tea. She must have used some kind of trick to seduce Flynn. Then, got into our relationship. Huh, the kind of fake woman. I'll teach her a lesson. I started stalking Emma and by coincidence, we lived in the same neighborhood. I smiled smugly, decided to approach Emma for revenge. On a beautiful day, when I was walking on the street, there was a struggle in the alley. I looked in, and discovered that there were two thugs teasing a girl. The girl looked very scared. Huh? Two men were bullying a weak girl. I clenched my fist and rushed to kick in one of the guys in the stomach. He was suddenly hit and fell to the ground. The other guy gritted his teeth and looked at me indignantly. He yelled and jumped at me. I jumped up, clamped my legs around his neck and fell to the ground. I waved my hands and raised my voice to chase them away. Get out! Two thugs were beaten badly. They scrambled difficultly, glared at me menacingly, and quickly led each other to leave. I turned around and asked if she was okay. But seconds later, I stopped. Wasn't this Emma, my ex's new girlfriend? Emma quickly ran in front of me, chirping her thanks. I just smiled and nodded. Can I invite you for a meal to say thank you for what you did there? I looked at Emma questioningly. Wasn't this a good opportunity for me to approach Emma? And so, yeah. I agreed. First contact. Emma was very friendly and enthusiastic. 
She was naive and asked me to teach her martial arts to defend herself. I look at her with disdain. Right now, I just wanted to peel her face off to see how she performed. When the waiter brought the food, I purposely flicked my hand so that the plate of food landed in Emma's skirt. But contrary to what I thought, Emma was very calm, did not appear to be serious, and reassured the waiter not to worry. Emma politely asked my permission to go to clean her dress. I was dumbfounded by Emma's actions. This girl was not simple at all. After the meal, we left together. Suddenly, there were five thugs rushing out in front of us, including two guys that I beat up the morning. They laughed and mocked me for being a girl who liked to poke her nose into other people. Emma nervously pulled my hand back. The thugs rushed up. I also raised my foot to give him a kick. When I was struggling with two tall guys, one guy would stick, lunged at me. I got hit in the back of the head and then fainted. When I woke up, Emma was beside me, looking at me worriedly. Emma burst into tears, clutching my hand and saying sorry repeatedly. Emma's hands were cold and trembling, and I suddenly felt her sincerity. This action, this word, and even those tears couldn't really be fake. I was silenced and said nothing. I thought I needed time to confirm what kind of person Emma was after all. In the following days, Emma regularly visited and took care of me until I was discharged from the hospital. I had to admit that Emma was very sweet. When she knew that I had lived alone and could not cook, she generously invited me to stay for a meal. Emma personally went to the kitchen and she cooked and danced happily. It seemed that she was passionate about cooking. After about half an hour, Emma brought in front of me two plates of spaghetti and a plate of delicious apple pie. My stomach started to protest violently. I happily enjoy a workmanship. Wow, it's so great! Emma and I gradually became closer. Emma considered me like an older sister in the family. We understood each other's personalities and I realized that Emma was not fake. She was inherently holy. But I still didn't understand why Emma stepped into my love affair with Flynn. Emma started sharing with me everything, mostly related to her relationship with Flynn. He looks like a liar. He's probably just taken advantage of you. No, Flynn has been very good to me. You two are not compatible. You should break up. Why do you get so excited every time I mention Flynn? He's really cool. Emma went on to talk about Flynn proudly. Her eyes were filled with hope and faith in a pink love with a happy ending. God, Flynn had never done that to me before. You know, Flora, he broke up with a girl two years ago. But even now, she still wants to get back. How great must he be to make that girl nauseous for two years now? What? Break up two years? How dare he say we broke up for so long? While in fact, it was only two days. So Emma was fooled just like me. <sighs> That's right. How could this little girl be so cunning that she got into my relationship? So I mistakenly blamed Emma. The person who deserved to be cursed right now was exactly my ex-boyfriend Flynn. He teased me with my feelings, kicked me mercilessly, and even cheated at Emma's little heart. After a long night of excruciating thoughts, I decided to find Flynn to teach him a lesson. Flynn was still the same. He's still handsome with his signature pink hair. When Flynn saw me, he sneered, <laughs> swaggering. Yo, I heard you want to get back with me, Flora. It's a pity. I already have a new girlfriend. I immediately punched him right in the stomach. Flynn was suddenly beaten, clutching his stomach and grimacing. You cheated on me for months before you officially broken up with me. You're a liar and incompetent. Uh, I don't think you can do anything except violence. I approached Emma and tried to isolate you too. Flora? I jumped when I heard Emma's voice behind me. When I turned around, Emma stood staring at me blankly. Her big round eyes were filled with tears, clearly showing her disappointment. I was momentarily worried and felt afraid to face her. 
Emma pushed me away and rushed over to help Flynn. Are you okay? Listen, Emma. He lied to us. Now I understand why you always say Flynn is no good. You want me to break up with him so you can have a chance to come back, right? Oh no! Emma, that's not what I meant. I tried to explain, but Emma didn't want to listen. She carried Flynn away and left me. At that time, I felt very heavy and depressed. I felt empty, like I just lost something very important. After that day, Emma no longer contacted me. I also met her a few times in the lobby of the apartment building. But soon, she tried to avoid me. In Emma's eyes now, I was like an evil witch trying to find a way to steal her love. And most of all, maybe she was disappointed because she trusted me so much. I remembered her petite figure when she cooked, the taste of the food she made. I actually wanted to protect her rather than seek revenge like I wanted in the first place. But after all, she chose to trust Flynn over me. That day, I was walking on the street when a luxury car passed. In the car was a couple of lovers <laughs> hugging each other very intimately. Wait, that pink hair! Isn't that Flynn? Why is he with another girl? Immediately, I bounced off the gear and followed the car. The car clattered in front of a five-star restaurant. Elegantly, Flynn got out of the car and helped the other girl inside. Very good. His prey this time was a hot girl with cut dresses showing off her curves. The bag in her hand was worth a hundred dollars. What a lucrative prey. Immediately, I thought of Emma. Was she okay? I hurriedly picked up the phone, but Emma didn't answer. No way. I immediately went to Emma's room and knocked on the door. Emma opened the door. The moment she saw me, she hurriedly closed the door, but I was able to hold it. Wait, Flynn is cheating on you. He flirts and dates a hot girl with a lot of money. Please, we're very good right now. He's so miserable, don't believe him. He'll leave you again the same way he left me. I trust Flynn very much. Don't try to divide us. Flynn says he doesn't love you anymore. Please leave us in peace. Emma slammed the door shut. I was stunned. I found myself ridiculous. My story with Flynn was over. Why I was so worried when I found out he had someone else? Obviously, I really hated Flynn and I didn't have any feelings for him anymore. I realized I cared about Emma more than that bastard. I'm just afraid that she will go through what I went through with that guy. What would she do if she found out that Flynn was always cheating on her? I went back to my room. My mind was full of thoughts. The events made my body so tired. I decided not to pay attention to Flynn and Emma anymore. A week later, while I was sleeping in my bed, someone knocked on my door and woke me up. I yawned, lazily walked to the door and opened it. It's Emma. Surprisingly, I hurriedly led her into the house. Emma looked much thinner and more emaciated. Her eyes were puffy and bloodshot like she had been crying all night. I had a feeling that something terrible had happened. I poured a glass of cold water and placed it in front of Emma. He really betrayed me. I should have believed in you. Emma showed a picture of Flynn with the other hot girl. Below was the status announcing that they would be getting married soon this September. Grr, bastard, I knew it. Emma trembled and sobbed. I watched her cry and it was indescribable pain. I quietly sat next to her, hugging her in my arms, patting her head comfortingly. After Emma stopped crying, I steadfastly looked in her eyes. We'll give him a lesson. The weather in September was really pleasing to people. The air was cool and comfortable. By the sea, a grand wedding was taking place with lots of fresh flowers and wine. The priest stood in front of the couple, saying the vows. Bros, do you take Mr. Flynn as your husband, promising to return faithful, in good times and in bad times, in sickness and in health, to love and respect all life? 
Yes, I do. And Flynn, do you agree to remain faithful in good times and bad, in sickness and in health, to love? And respect Miss Rose here for the rest of your life. Flynn looked at Rose with a satisfied smile. The final step in his plan was almost done. As long as he could marry Rose, he would have a luxurious life for the rest of his life. I object. Emma stepped forcefully into the aisle. The guests present watching her in surprise. Flynn was also taken aback, nervously watching Emma. Emma stood in the middle of the stage and said loudly. Flynn promised to take care of and love me for the rest of my life. Last night, he was still with me and said he loved me very much. He tricked everyone. Emma held up intimate photos of the two of them. The whole hall erupted in amazement. Rose looked at him uncomfortably. How's it going, Flynn? She's a slanderer. Flynn began to lose his temper. He jumped up and grabbed Emma's arm, swinging his arm around to slap her. Suddenly, Flynn's arm was grabbed and bent backward. Flynn held in pain. I controlled him, sneered. Me too, right, Flynn? Emma and I sit up. Together, we denounced what he had done and the plan to take over Rose's property. Flynn was undeniably speechless. Rose was furious, throwing the bouquet straight at him. You bastard! Flynn was frightened and knelt down begging Rose to forgive. But Rose refused. She immediately called the bodyguards and kicked him out. Flynn looked pathetic right now, but that's what he deserved. I held Emma's hand tightly. We successfully taught him a lesson of a lifetime. You know, even though Flynn is terrible, in the end, I think I should thank him. Because thanks to his promiscuity, I found my true love. Emma, I have to accept one thing. I really love her. And so does Emma. After breaking up Rose and Flint's wedding together, we become a couple and decided to live together. Emma will cook me delicious meals again, and I will continue to protect my little girl. This is exactly the life I've always dreamed of. Hello everyone, I'm Helen from Washington. And today, I have a personal story to share with you. But before I start, please like and subscribe to my channel. I came back to my mother's house in another city and cut off all contact with that man. I wanted to move on and have nothing to do with him in the future. Two years have passed and my life seems to be more decent than before. I had been working as a saleswoman at the most luxurious boutique in the city center. Everything in my life's been the way I want it to be until the day I encountered Albert. But what's worth mentioning is that I saw him appearing in an article on the street. Yeah, 
in an article. You heard that right. According to that one, he started to have a flourishing <laughs> career thanks to a certain technology project. Despite being quite young, he was invited to be the CEO of a top-notch technology company in the city. I couldn't believe it. In the past, I used to curse and bitch about his useless projects day by day. Look at the CEO. He really is a great man. How commendable. I heard that his wife left him when he was starting a business. I bet she would regret it now. I think now she may be kneeling and begging in front of him. <laughs> I can imagine her face. I bet she would cry and plead. Could you please think of our hard times being together as husband and wife? Then give me the chance to remarry you. His imitation of a woman's voice pissed me off. How dare he say that while he knows nothing? He said, as if I needed Albert's pity money. Yeah. I couldn't contain myself at the time. So, I battered him with my bag, which resulted in us being called to the police station. We continued our heated argument there. He didn't admit he was wrong and kept quarreling with me at the top of his lungs. She should be locked here so that she wouldn't batter anyone unruly in public places. He defamed me. Defamed you? We were just chatting about a woman who had nothing to do with you. <laughs> nothing to do with me? I am the woman you talked about. No sooner had the words left my mouth than those men bursted into laughter in the police station. He looked at me scornfully. Are you daydreaming? We were talking about a billionaire's ex-wife, don't you know? I am his ex-wife. <laughs> so you can call him to go here? <laughs> call him? Tell him to go to the police station. I might be filled with scorn if he knows my situation. At this point, I had no choice but to call my mother to pay the bail. But don't you know, the person who came was not my mom, but Albert. Look at him now. He no longer had a poor scholar appearance like two years ago. He turned into a completely different person. He wore an elegant black suit, a luxurious watch on his wrist, and shiny boots. His current aura truly made people admire him, including me. I was drowning in his eyes while he walked in. Images of our blissful married life in the old days seemed to play in slow motion in my head. Next time, don't bother me with this nonsense. His words seemed to bum me out and wake me up. I knew he would despise me. Isn't it you? The one who shoots the mouth off that I insist on sharing the properties with you after divorce? Is it true? I never shot my mouth like that. I didn't even want to remember your existence. His words kept ringing in my ears until we left the police station. He forgot everything I did for him during his years of unemployment, in which he stuck his head in the projects that made him as successful as today. I felt a little bit lost deep inside in my heart. A few days later, I received a call from Albert when I was working. He invited me to a luxurious restaurant to talk. Maybe he regretted his bad behavior towards me the other day. Or he even <laughs> wanted to come back to me. So in the afternoon, after work, I eagerly went to a shopping mall to buy a new beautiful dress, got a new hairstyle, and did a gorgeous makeup. It felt like I was going back to our very first date. I couldn't wait. Then I came to the address that he sent me. I couldn't hold my impression when looking at that luxurious restaurant. I went in excitedly. Albert had sat at the table. Looks like he was waiting for me to come. You came. Come and sit. Albert, he seemed to put his heart into this date. He was so gentle and ordered a table full of my favorite dishes. I've never thought that one day we would eat at such a luxurious restaurant. Um... Back then, you were only up to your ears in projects. Sometimes I wondered whether your wife was me or them. But back in those days, you were a wonderful cook. I really thought that I could eat the meals that you cook forever and never need to go to a luxurious restaurant. Albert's words reminded me of all the pieces of the past, little by little. Apparently, the conversation acted like an accelerant which made us become closer. Suddenly, Albert asked me to go somewhere else. I accepted immediately without any further consideration. Deep inside my heart at that time, there was a glimmer of hope about our love story. 
Albert took me to a small house on the outskirts of the city. When I walked into the house, I felt some familiar vibes. Do you remember? This is your dream house. I've built it. It's just that we're not together anymore. Indeed, I had decided to have such a beautiful little house for both of us. Did you prepare this for me? I thought you did hate me. I know what your purpose in approaching me is. Did you think that I would give you a chance? As it turned out, Albert has always thought that I approached him because of his money and because he was <laughs> successful at that time. I finally realized, after all, Albert just wanted to get revenge on me because I left him and he was struggling with these projects. I truly didn't understand. He didn't know that during those two years, what I did have put on the line because of him. He wanted me to live such a life while giving me no sign of hope. But at that time, he used the money that he earned to humiliate me. Sign this contract and take this check. I hope this will be the last time I see you. You... You... Don't you want the money? I can give you that. Just stop bothering me. In return for my excitement was a check. I wonder how he despised me at that time. I acted like I received that check stared at it for a moment, then tore it into pieces and threw them on his face. I left in anger. I cannot let my self-esteem be destroyed like that. After getting home, I kept thinking about Albert's words. They were like a knife cutting my heart. I will definitely make him pay for what he did to me. Suddenly one day, I came across a recruiting advertisement from Albert company. His company was recruiting for a saleswoman position with a lucrative salary. Okay, the more he wanted to avoid me, the more I would appear in front of him to make him frustrated. <laughs> and somehow, I succeeded in getting into his company. And do you know what expression won in his face when he saw me appearing at his company? He hit the roof and dragged me out of the company. You're in no position to appear in my company. Why? Your staff recruited me themselves. You have no right to kick me out. No right? Did you forget that I'm the CEO here? So what? What's the matter of hiring me? Are you afraid to fall in love with me again? Are you daydreaming? God knows, but if it's not that, what are you afraid of? Unexpectedly, those words made his face change color and he immediately let me work at the company. But things weren't going as smoothly as I had hoped. Albert used his power to make me do all sorts of work. Sometimes, he asked me to buy him coffee other times to get a bunch of clothes, or even to run up and down the company lobby for nothing. And if I refuse his order, of course, he would give me two words, being fired. But I did some payback though. Sometimes, I deliberately added a little vinegar to his coffee. Other times, I cut his clothes a little bit. Could you imagine his expression at that time? He went crazy, and obviously, he would find me to give punishment. But the angrier he was, the more satisfied I would be. I didn't know what the exact reason was, but Albert seemed to be annoyed every time I chatted with a male colleague in the company. But I didn't care. I would make him more frustrated. I intentionally do some intimate behaviors toward male colleagues, and I warned him not to let people know that I was his ex-wife. If you tell everyone that I'm your ex-wife, I won't leave you alone. Huh. I don't care. But you should remember, my company doesn't allow love in the workplace. Don't cause trouble and notoriety for this company. You can be assured, I won't bother you. You... you... Albert was speechless, which delighted me. <laughs> the company threw a party at the end of the year. I dressed up for the occasion. Albert was standing next to Norman, my sales manager. I approached them, and my intended target was, of course, not Albert. I greeted Norma while pretending not to notice Albert's presence. I invited Norman out to dance with me. We had a great time dancing. We performed a fantastic dance in front of the company's appreciation and astonishment. But what I didn't expect was that while I was still engrossed in the dancing atmosphere, Albert suddenly was frustrated and dragged me out of the party. What the hell are you doing just now? I did warn you not to have any love story at this company. Have I loved someone yet? Even if I have, it's not your business. You're poking your nose into my life. Is it because you have feelings for me? Stop daydreaming already. 
Right after hearing those words, I was little disappointed. Then I became enraged and left. Then please stay away from me. But as soon as I took off a few steps, my high heels broke. I lost my balance and fell forward. Just as I was about to collapse, a tall figure swiftly wrapped his arms around my waist and grabbed me. That familiar scent, that feeling of intimacy that I hadn't experienced for a long time. It was Albert. We made eye contact. Time seemed to freeze at that moment. Can we... can we somehow come back to each other? Um... Albert then raised me up, looking down at the heels of my shoes, thinking for a second, then picking me up. God, what was he up to? This made me feel embarrassed, so I resisted and repeatedly smacked his chest. What the heck are you doing? Drop me to the ground. Everyone is staring. You're my wife after all. What are you afraid of? Don't you want to remarry? I... I... As you can see, he and I are now remarried. Our wedding was massive. He said he wanted to make up for me for what I didn't get when we were both impoverished. <laughs>